Welcome to Subscription Drop 3 of Thinking Particles. In this video, we will discuss the new features we have added to the caching system. First, let's have a look at the scene. What we can see here is a particle effect scene. We have a smoke fluid simulation going on. From the smoke particles, we emit shapes, these little spheres. And from these spheres, we emit another particle system, our yellow dust particle. The setup is pretty simple and straightforward. We have three levels of dynamic sets. Our base level starts with the smoke simulation, where we have in the smoke simulation the creation process, the smoke group with all our settings, and the smoke simulation dynamic set. Above of this set, we have the shape. And above there, we have our main high-level reborn dynamic set. So the first base level is responsible for the fluid dynamics, the smoke effect. Then, after the smoke fluid cools down, we use a simple threshold on the temperature to create the shapes. What we do here is we take the data channel temperature and we just do a threshold and then move the particles into a separate group. We move these particles into the shape group. So when the particles cool down, we create spheres. As you can see here, we create the spheres as the particles reach their cool temperature. And the other level is our dust particles that we create from the shapes. So our highest level uh, setup is here. And there you can see we create the shapes on particle age effect. When it enters the shapes group, we create this spray effect or dust effect. Just to show you, these are the yellow ticks. So we have this nice hierarchy set up. And now let's see how we can work with our caching system to cache out all the simulation steps, each after another. We start with the lowest level of cache. Let's bring up the cache record dialog. The first thing you will notice is we have a new uh, caching option. It's called TPC. The TPC files are for frame cache files, so for every frame we write an individual cache file. That's in contrast to the TPS file that writes only one big, large, humongous file. We are now able to write out each frame as an individual file. This has a lot of advantages for network rendering, for example. Okay, we have written the cache for the lowest level. And as you can see, the simulation is still working fine. Now we get all the fluid simulation particles from a cache file. So there's no more simulation needed. Let's go up one hierarchy level and write out the shapes. And here's our new feature in the file caching system. With TPC file caches, you can decide what you want to write out. And that saves a lot of space on your hard drive and makes things faster as well. So we only want the position. And because we want to write out shapes, we need to activate the shape channel. And because it's a fluid simulation, we also need to make sure that our temperature doesn't get lost. So we need to write out our data channels as well. So here we have it, data channels and shape. We write that out as a TPC file. Everything goes out nice. Caching works and we have 100 TPC files with the information. And that includes now the lower level cache as well. So we're stepping up hierarchy step by step. So now we've written the shapes out to its own cache file. Let's have a look. And, and still everything is working just fine. We get the shapes and we get our dust particles. The dust particles are created right now off the cache file. So we have two cache files now, the smoke fluid simulation and the spheres, the shape particles. Now let's go to the highest hierarchy level. And there we want to write out everything. 
So everything below, including the dust particles. So what we need again is our data channel. Then we want to have our shapes. And that should be it. That's all what we need. We record the highest level cache as well. Every frame will be saved as an individual cache file that makes it really efficient for network rendering, for example. A great news is also that our cache file is now 10 times faster in writing, so we could speed up the cache writing process a lot. Here we have the nice hierarchy, every cache from down below up to the hierarchy. To give you an even easier way to handle your hierarchy caches, we implemented this little tool here. You can call it anytime and that shows your hierarchy. In clear text, you get information on each hierarchy and you can render the active, invalid or selected. So you can select each individual cache and just redo it from here. Let's say you adjust your scene and work on your scene and you forgot about the dependencies, which cache needs which cache to work on and blah, blah, blah. So let me invalidate this one. I'll change one. And now the system knows automatically all the hierarchy needs updating. So the only thing you need to do now is just press the in invalid button and it will automatically do the hard work for you. You press this little button and everything is automatic. You walk off your workstation, have some fun, have a party, have a coffee, whatever you want. Go out, watch the sky, watch the birds fly. Thinking Particles is working for you in the background. It's going through all the caches that are dependent and it will refresh every single cache and it knows which ones to refresh. So after this is done, everything is up to date and you can just go ahead and play back or work on your scene file. We think that's a really powerful tool we have here and including the speed enhancements we have in the cache, it's really great to have this new caching system in subscription drop three. Let's close this and just one last check, so we have all these caches in a row. We can select each individual channel we want to set, uh, write out. That's very memory efficient because you have full control what kind of data you want to have in the file. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our other Subscription Drop 3 videos. Thanks for watching this video.